So tonight we are going to talk about, still about the heart, but this time something more serious uh, compared to last night. Last night we have, we have learned that heart disease is the number one killer here in the Philippines. And last night we have learned to avoid three things, or one thing just uh, last night. Trans fat, then we have to increase our intake of foods that are rich in potassium. And there's something missing in the slide. Can you help me? What's the other thing we talked about last night? Can you remember? It's fiber. Okay, it's fiber. And last night I showed you this slide because I don't want you to forget about this. In order to avoid heart disease, you have to avoid trans fat, saturated fat, and cholesterol. Now we're going to talk about these two tonight. Trans, uh, sorry, saturated fats, according to the American Heart Association, can raise your bad cholesterol and it will increase your risk for heart disease. And it has been proven for decades now. And if you ask, where can you find saturated fat? Here's the figures. You can see that saturated fat is very high in cheese, in red meat, in chicken, and so on. So most people, if you ask them where you can find saturated fat, they would usually answer either beef or pork. But tonight I'd like to say that cheese has a higher percentage of saturated fat. So how much of this can we take? How much trans fat, saturated fat, or cholesterol is okay, quote in quote? The answer is zero. Zero. We need zero trans fat, we need almost zero saturated fat, and certainly zero cholesterol. What is the highest natural source of cholesterol? Do you know? The highest natural source of cholesterol is food. It's eggs. Okay? Do you know that? How high? Do you know how high? We'll know later. Now there is a study, the Nurses Health Study 2, which I believe started in 1976 and probably finished around 2004, somewhere at the time. It took them 30 years to do this study. Uh, 120 or 250,000 participants. And they were able to uh, discover a lot of things about cholesterol and heart disease. They found out, and by the way, for those of you in the medical field, you might want to look for this study if you really want to read the whole study. It's risk factors for mortality in the nurses' health study, a competing risk analysis. Now, for those of you who are interested in research, this type of study is very special because when, when a study is has this component, co competing risk analysis. It means that if there is a certain behavior, you can compare the risk of having a disease from this certain type of behavior with another. Let's say, in this study, they found out, you, you, you have to listen to this, they found out that the risk of heart disease with just eating a single just one, a single egg a day has the same cardiac risk of smoking five sticks of cigarettes for 15 years every day. That's the, the same risk. So if you're a smoker and you, you, and you smoke five cigarettes a day for 15 years, that's the same risk you have if you're eating an egg a day. Is that new to you? Yeah, you, 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 may, you may say you're not a smoker, but if you're eating an egg a day, that's just as bad as smoking. And they found out that the most protective 
factor is still fiber. And if you are here tonight, you know where to find your fiber. You can find it in beans and, of course, fruits and vegetables. Question. Is there fiber in meat? Is there fiber in meat? I can hear some answers. It's zero. There is no fiber in meat. Okay, let's go back to the study. They found out that if you have adequate intake of fiber in a day, it's just as good, it's just as protective as if you were jogging four hours a week. Is that great? But you can do both. You, should, you, you cannot substitute this for this. Okay? Now, here's the recommended limits for cholesterol. Now, cholesterol is something that we do not need. There are no recommended uh, intake for that. It's like alcohol. You, nobody recommends a certain amount of alcohol. They're just, they have set limits, just like alcohol. Uh, things that are inherently unhealthy are given limits. Now, I've, I've included here the Harvard study. Uh, these two figures are from the American Heart Association. If you are uh, a healthy woman, woman and uh, your, it shows here that your cholesterol limit per day is just around 150 milligrams. Now, if you are a young, healthy man, you can, your limit is up to 300 milligrams a day. But if you are already at risk, let's say you're already in your 40s, in your 50s, or, or you already have a heart disease, your limit is actually at 200 milligrams a day. Now, question. We have, we've, I've told you earlier that the egg is the highest natural source of cholesterol. Now, how high is the cholesterol in one egg? Where do you think in, would it fall? It's around 220 at average. So it means that if you are, if, it, if you're a woman, even if you're healthy, you, you, you just can't eat an egg a day because it's way beyond your limits, according to the Harvard st uh, study. And if you are somebody who is at risk of heart disease or you already have a heart disease, you still can because it's 220 and it's beyond your daily limit for cholesterol. Now you say, well, I'm still young. Uh, I can probably still eat eggs. But if you're insistent in doing that, you for the rest of the day, you can't eat anything else with cholesterol like your chicken because just adding probably half a uh, serving of chicken would, would, would just send you over the, the limits. Even some fishes, they would send you over the limit of your daily cholesterol limit. And so if you insist in eating an egg a day, probably you should be a vegetarian for the rest of the day. Now, I want to make this uh, point straight now. A lot of people are still confused where they can find cholesterol. Animal products are the only foods that contain cholesterol. There are no, I repeat, there is no cholesterol in fruits and vegetables. So even doctors get confused. They, they, they say avocado has cholesterol, which apparently it does not have because it's not a meat product. So only animal products, only meat products have cholesterol. Did everybody get it? Okay, that's clear. Last night, I flashed this question. Which of the two would you avoid if you were avoiding heart disease? Now, a lot of people believe that quail eggs, pugo, have more cholesterol than chicken eggs. Is that correct? Is that right? Actually, the answer is no. No. Let's, let's see the figures. An egg can have around 190 for the small ones, 
as much as 275 milligrams of cholesterol per egg, the, lar the largest ones, which gives it an average of around 220 or 230. While a quail egg can have 76 milligrams of cholesterol per egg. But who, who eats just one piece of quail egg? Okay, so here's the figures. If you're gonna eat four of them, you, you're sending yourself over the boundaries. Eating just four of them will send you rocking to 300 uh, milligrams or something. And I think that uh, small plastic has around how many? Five? Is it five? Ten? Five. Five. There's five. Okay, so it's more than 300 milligrams. So that's a lot of cholesterol. And remember, how much do we need of cholesterol? Zero. So 300 and zero are just long way. Any amount of cholesterol you eat will raise the total cholesterol and start atherosclerosis. Now, uh, last night I have told you about this. When you age, when, when your arteries become inflamed, they become hardened, they become narrow, and they create a lot, of pro a lot of problems later. Any amount will increase your cholesterol, according to the Institute of Medicine, even this small quail egg. Now, I'm going to tell you something about cholesterol. We have, we have said that we do not need cholesterol. And for those of you in the medical field, you can check the Institute of Medicine. This is the same institute which, which suggested that we should have recommended daily allowances way back in 1997. And if you can check their website, they've, you notice here, saturated fat, trans fat, and cholesterol, they placed the recommended daily allowance is ND, no data, because they say even at very low levels, you will be increasing your LDL cholesterol. So, why bother taking them? Any amount, even the smallest amounts they've known by research that it will increase your cholesterol. So, they just placed it. Yeah, nobody take saturated fat. Nobody should take uh, cholesterol. Nobody should take such a trans fat so it's zero and we do not need to eat sources of cholesterol because our body makes more than enough so your body already creates the needed cholesterol your cholesterol is part of your body structures and your body creates enough to be used by the rest of your body so we need zero cholesterol and you can imagine it like this Every day, your body will create enough cholesterol to be used for the structures in your body. Now, what happens if you import cholesterol? By importing cholesterol, I mean eating cholesterol. Because your body already makes enough, then you add more by eating products that have cholesterol. Now, you may have, for those of you who are been, uh, uh, having l your laboratories taken, you may be familiar with this. Your LDL, your HDL. Actually, they are not the actual cholesterol. They are just the carriers. You can think of them as buses. It's a low-density lipoprotein that's the meaning and a high-density lipoprotein. They're like the carriers. They, they're, they shuttle your cholesterol in the body. They, they, the, the cholesterol will ride uh, in the bus and be transported to wherever it is needed. Now your, your liver, your body makes enough cholesterol and it does not need dietary cholesterol to make it. You can imagine that these orange dots are your cholesterol. Now, it needs a carrier to bring the cholesterol to the parts of your body and this is what your buses are for. Your, your cholesterol uh, gets a ride with these LDLs and they go to the rest of the body. Now your HDL, so-called, they call it the good cholesterol, are actually the buses that transport the cholesterol from the rest of the body back into the liver. And the cycle is continued. So there are cholesterol going from the liver to the rest of your body. There are cholesterol going from your body back to the liver. So it's like the traffic. Okay? Now, 
what happens if you eat food with cholesterol? Remember, your body makes enough. And then you have a surplus of cholesterol, some, but something that you imported. The body would have to make more of these buses so that they could transport it. And so you see, when you have your laboratory, your LDLs would naturally increase. Now, these buses, you can imagine them, they're driving along your arteries and then they would come to a stop. And then they would knock on the doors of the cells. They say, <clears throat> good morning, do you need cholesterol? They, they will ask the cells. And then the, cell, the people in the cell will say, no, we have enough cholesterol already here. Maybe, maybe tomorrow, maybe some other time. And then the LDL will continue for a short ride and then stop uh, and then take another stop and then knock on the doors and say, good morning, sir. Do you need cholesterol today? And then the, the cells would just say, no, we have enough. Maybe some other time. And so all of this extra cholesterol that you eat will just be in the, in the LDLs and then they will say, what are we going to do with this? Well, we could just drop it off the, the highway. And so they deposit that in your arteries. They, they, they put the, the excess cholesterol in your arteries and then you have heart disease. So the more cholesterol you take, there will be more LDL carriers needed and there will be excess cholesterol in your body, in your arteries. Uh, for those of you in the medical field, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to simplify things for everybody here. So, here's your artery and uh, when you continue to eat foods that are rich in cholesterol and saturated fat, through the years, your arteries will inflame. And to a point, it will actually become block. And if that happens, you get a heart attack, or if it happens to an artery going to your brain, you get a stroke. Yeah, the number two, uh, the second killer in your country is stroke. So how low should blood cholesterol be to avoid heart disease? In a study, they found out that 75% of those having their heart attack actually had a normal LDL. Their, their bad, so-called bad cholesterols are within the normal range. And so the editor-in-chief of the American Journal of Cardiology said, if heart attacks are occurring to a person who has a normal blood cholesterol, what can we do about that? Well, right now, the desirable cholesterol level is at 200 and they consider above 200 to be borderline high and so on. And if you have a cholesterol right here, chances are you are still going to have a heart attack. So it's not a guarantee that you'll be safe even if your levels are, are at safe range. So they, they, they did a lot of study and they found out that Probably right now, the safest level would be at around 150. Now, if you ask, there are only two ways that you can reach that level. Number one is the drugs. You're going to use statins, lipid-lowering drugs, or you have another option, a plant-based diet without eggs, without milk, and dairy products. So why not just, just choose the drug? Well, okay, why not just go with the drug? The, the, the Food and Drug Administration a few years ago has um, uh, uh, released this report that statins have risk, but they want to add more to that because they found out that these lipid-lowering drugs actually may cause memory loss, forgetfulness, confusion. And they found out that it actually increases the risk of type 2 diabetes. Now, some, some doctors commented you have a lower risk of heart disease by using these lipid-lowering drugs, but at the cost of having higher risk of type 2 diabetes. So it's, you know, it's a problem. But there is something that can help solve heart disease and at the same time, diabetes. And it's called the plant-based diet. And it's like killing two birds with an apple. 
because yeah that's I didn't make it up Th that's a real phrase you can killing two birds with an apple also means to complete two discrete tasks in single action so if you want to prevent both heart disease and diabetes there is one solution for both in review to avoid heart disease you should have a healthy weight by exercise we, w we are going to discuss this more in the coming days and you should avoid trans fat where's trans fat again you can you can so that you cannot forget this all you have to do is to think about your favorite food and that's it that's trans fat <laughs> basically you just think about your favorite food and that's trans fat saturated fat which is in cheese and meat products and cholesterol which is only in meat products and you should increase your fiber which is found in fruits and vegetables and basically that's it that's your heart disease I know that this heart lecture is heartbreaking for everyone you see you have to give up a lot of things and but there is something that I'd like to tell you uh, this may be hard uh, it, I think it needs a lot of praying but in Philippians 4.13 it says, let's say, it all, let's say this all together. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. You have to claim that. So tomorrow, please come back at 10.30 a.m. to know more about the brain and mental health. So thank you so much for coming. I've, I'm so happy to see all of you tonight and see you again tomorrow. Thank you.